Hey guys, this is Drew with the Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to give you guys one tip that has really helped our coin business succeed and flourish so far. It's the thing that we've been using all of our life to make decisions on what to buy and what to sell. Uh, but we hope it helps you in this video. Let's get this video started. Uh, we hope you enjoy it. So it's been a long day. Uh, we just got home uh, from Royal Coins. We filmed two episodes of the podcast. We can't wait to share them with you when they are made available. We do have one uh, episode that we have up on uh, the Freedom Coin Show uh, YouTube channel. We have that link down below for you. Basically, it talks about how uh, we started out in coin dealing, how you can start out in coin dealing if you're ever interested in that. We hope you guys enjoy that down below. But let's get started with this video. Uh, the reason why we made this video is because we've been asked a lot about, you know, how do you get the funds? How have you been able to do this? How, um, at such a young age, were you able to, you know, find a lot of inventory and make a lot of connections? And a lot of that has to do with what we spend our money on. Um, we're going to be sharing with you guys in just a moment um, what we've what we've been working on and something we actually bought recently. It has a, an engine in it, so it's not a coin. Um, but I think the major tip that I want to talk to you guys about today is um, what to spend your money on to help your business and what not to spend your money on. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about that with the, the car that we bought. I already just gave it away. But let's play that video now and talk to you guys about the car. And then we're going to come back and talk to you guys about some awesome new coins that we picked up. A whole lot of things that we got back from NGC, picked up from Blake. And uh, we actually got some coins in from someone on Instagram named Grant. So a lot of action-packed stuff in this video, but let's start start talking about that car. Okay, guys, so we show off new purchases of coins, but we're going to show off a new purchase that we just got. This is a 2002 Toyota Avalon. And you might ask yourself, why in the crap did you buy this, this car, right? It's got 221,000 miles, a little beat up. We're going to see a little bit more of it, but the reason why we got this car is because of something that kind of resonated with me this week. When uh, I was watching some kind of reels on Instagram, I saw Jeff Bezos' original desk, right? And his original desk is a door and a bunch of two by fours, right? And the guy walked into his office with him and he said, why? Why is this happening? Why are you using this desk? And he says, because it doesn't bring value to the end consumer. And so when we go to purchase things that aren't coins for cheap, we're doing it because we want to make sure we have enough funds to buy the great coins for you guys. So let's show you this car a little bit. You guys will enjoy it. It's a little bit of a clunker, but hey, you get the kicker, you get the slapper, anything that you want. But Let's go over here. So welcome to the Coin Show Daily Driver. All right, so what's the best part about this car is opening the doors. Oh dang, it didn't creak that time. The WD-40 did the work. But hey, seats are nice and broken in. It's got that really old musty smell to it. Um, you know, hey, just take a look at this right here. Oh yeah. But you know, it, it needs some TLC, let's be honest, okay? You know, a little bit of weight on the ground here, but she's a Toyota. Buy a Toyota. Buy, I mean, you got to buy a Toyota because it lasts long. You know, we're going to use this car for another 200,000 miles, God willing, you know. But take a look at the back seat here, all locked up. So take a look at the back seat here. Same kind of story, broken in, but really comfy car. AC still works. Um, the radio sucks, but we don't need the radio. You know, when you're making the coin deals on the road, you don't have to worry about the radio. Uh, yeah, plenty of space for anybody that we want to take around. You know, there's a lot of young numismatists at coin shows. And, uh, you know, just a very cheap, inexpensive car. Um, it's, it's just the way that we live our life. We like to buy things that will appreciate in value instead of depreciating in value like cars. But, you know, and another example, I have an iPhone 7. This thing is old as crap. I've been using it for a while, but I just don't like spending money on things. 
things that don't bring value to people uh, and don't appreciate kind of over time. And this car will not appreciate, but we paid half of KBB for it. So we hope you enjoyed this part of the video. We hope you guys enjoyed that part of the video. We talked about the car and the reason why we wanted to buy it is because uh, we ultimately, our heart is to offer as many coins and as nice of coins as possible for our website. We really want to make this a reality, uh, for uh, our dreams a reality. Uh, have a very flourishing uh, online presence so you guys can find the best coins possible. Enjoy content like this. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just, we're so thankful that you're watching this video right now. But let's show you guys some coins. Um, we're so eager to show you. Uh, we have a few things that I really enjoy myself, but uh, let me take the camera and show you guys some coins. Alrighty, so like we were talking about earlier, we got uh, our NGC order back. We also got some coins from Grant on Instagram, and we got a whole slew of things uh, from, from Blake at Royal Coins. Actually got something from Mooney Metals as well. A lot of the great group of guys here, but let's start off on the bottom row. Nice end of roll, 1885 Morgan Dollar. Um, you can just see those very faint lines on the coin, but uh, I, I wanted to send this in with the pair that it had. It was a part of like the Great Montana Horde. I think it was just a sales gimmick back then. Not too sure about its history. Got to look into that a little bit more, but still solid luster on the coin. Looked a little bit nice, so I thought I'd send it in. Mint State 64 was pretty solid grade. I do enjoy just the eye appeal of the coin. Just your average run-of-the-mill uh, toned coin, but... Wanted to send this coin in as well. I think I just really enjoyed the look on it, and it was really sharp. But it did come back AU details cleaned. I thought that as much, but getting it authenticated, getting in a holder like this, and uh, I don't know. I just like the look of it. Kind of has like a strike through on the right side as well, and I don't know. I like the appeal that it had. Um, really jumping into the seed stuff full force. So uh, something like that really does, uh, you know, really does spark my fancy, even though it is cleaned. Here's something, a head scratcher. We bought this coin in an NGC holder in MS63. Uh, it came back clean from PCGS, and now it's come back clean from NGC. So, uh, a tip for you guys, never crack out a coin in most cases. In most cases, you just want to uh, get things uh, reconsidered if you think it's going to go for an upgrade, because sometimes you're cracking out a coin that might not grade straight again. And so we are buried in that coin, but it's something that we're learning, and Sometimes losing the money is okay because it really does teach you and makes you remember things that you should learn and, and work on for next time. Are you guys enjoying today's video? If you are, please leave a like. Uh, comment down below, what was the price of your first ever car? And name the make and model. That would be pretty cool too. Uh, you know, it's just something interesting about you. And subscribe if you're new. I mean, we like to share coins. We like to share a little bit about ourselves every single episode. And uh, we really want to just start to create an awesome uh, community of collectors. And, uh, you know, guys, go check out that podcast. Go subscribe down below. When the episodes start rolling, you're going to be very happy with what you listen to on the way to work or when you're at home. But let's get back to today's video. But that is what it is. We uh, submitted this coin on behalf of a consignment uh, deal that we have going on. A really cool guy that I've been able to talk to on the phone and talk to talk with him about Christ. Um, his name's Stephen, but we ended up submitting this for him. We thought it might have been counterfeit. We had it kind of authenticated at a coin shop, but it ended up coming back to AU53. Very happy about that for him. And we're going to have this listed on the website for you guys to pick up. A little bit of a tougher date for an Indian, especially it's an estimate as well. Um, here is something that I've been waiting to send for a while now. We, we went to Pan in, I think, 2020, at the end of 2020. I'm not too sure, but um, this coin really does look like a strong proof-like uh, appearance. You can almost tell that by just how liquid the fields are on it. Didn't get a proof-like designation, but I do enjoy the look of it. This one might just be sitting in the personal collection for a little bit. Maybe until I can get a reconsideration on it, but... I still just like the how the, the Colombian look from the start. I think I've had this coin for like at least over a year now. And I do like just the look of it. It's an early die stage type of coin. Here's a coin that we thought would grade a little bit better, but it didn't. This is a 1935 uh, Texas commemorative half dollar graded MS65. Uh, we thought this one had a shot at 66, maybe even a little better. 
but NGC didn't see it that way. That's just the way it goes. And uh, we'll have this one available for you guys. The best state in the land. Let's be honest, Texas is the way. Here is the one that also came from the same kind of hoard as this one. This is an 1883-0 Morgan dollar with kind of a interesting toning pattern. It does have some textile all the way, uh, you know, coming across the face, in front of the face, on the hair. That's why I kind of bought the pair to begin with. Spent some extra money on stuff like this, but I thought this one had uh, kind of enough history to add a premium. It almost has like a thread on above the head as well. Not something that you see every single day, but still pretty neat. Now let's move on to the coins we picked up on Instagram. This is an 1861 uh, Indian head set. The reason why I like to pick this coin up is because we've been buying Indian head sets like crazy. This one is a Civil War date. Has kind of an interesting look to it, almost like a toned look to it on the obverse. Like a green look, but still nice average circulated piece. Pretty interesting. Um, we also got another one here from 1862. Just your middle of the road coins, um, especially if you're trying to fill, you know, a very affordable Indian head set. set. I think this one is just, uh, like I said, a middle of the road coin, especially when you're just trying to start out and buy something unique. I think Indian head sets are a great, great place to start. Really intricate design and enjoy the history about it. This is, you know, not your average Morgan dollar. This is an 1893S. Only 100,000 were made and a lot were melted down, but this one is graded AG3 by NGC. Had this one raw for a while. Most people didn't trust it, but uh, we wanted to send it in because most of the time 1893Ss are, are going to be the most reproduced and ones that people try to fake the most. And so authenticating it is something that you want to do if you buy it raw, but most of the time, like I was talking about with the 16Ds, you want to send it in um, when... Uh, when you get it or you want to buy a coin that's already authenticated because, um, you know, keeping it raw and not knowing if it's 100% legit is something that will cost you money in the end. So authentication on key dates, especially when they're highly reproduced from China and everything else, is a must for you on stuff like this. But glad it came back AG3. Uh, here's uh, 1912. Uh, I'm sorry, V-Nickel. Does have some, kind of like an auburn looking obverse here a few little uh spots but the luster is still strong on the coin i do like the cartwheel it has on the reverse here yeah still is very lustrous uh we've been trying to buy some peace dollars they've been going off uh going off the shelves as of late this is a 1935 s uh, peace dollar right before really where it starts to get in dangerous money where you're spending a, a few hundred bucks to over a thousand dollars this one's actually super affordable I enjoy the eye appeal on the coin, nothing that's too distracting, um, and the luster is still strong for AU58. Um, not too sure if it would cack, still have to take a look at it in person, but yeah, I really like that coin a lot when I took it out of the uh, took it out of the package today. Also been buying some cap bus. Eight, this is an 1839. I don't know what um, what specific variety it is. They have so many like different Overton, all this stuff varieties, it's just it's very confusing. So I'm still trying to understand that a lot, but haven't picked up an 1839 cap bus before, so kind of a new thing for me. Still have to learn about uh, the RE. I think that's the GRI that they talk about, but like I said again, I'm not going to speak for something unless I know fully uh, about it. This is something that we like picking up as well. This is an 1884 Morgan Dollar rated MS62 Dimple by NGC. Really nice obverse here. Very few contact marks and... Uh, I don't know, I just love how you can move it in the light and it just goes completely black in uh, the fields. A little bit hazy on the reverse, which does give me the, the suspicion that it was graded uh, mint state 62. That's what you're normally going to see. The more uh, kind of dark fields that you get and less contact marks, you're going to get a better grade. Here is uh, a 1943. Mercury Dime, I do think this one is a little bit better than an MS65, and this one does have some toning on it, so buying stuff in this old soapboxes, mainly uh, Mercury Dimes, they're actually graded pretty strict, so this coin actually has really strong characteristics about it, and you know, buying a coin that looks undergraded does help it sell. I'm not going to mess with it and try and cracking it out and all that stuff, but uh, I do just like offering coins that look nice for the grade, and that's what... 
CAC does for a lot of the coins that NGC and PCGS holders, but this one for sure is pretty nice. Let's start off with the next row here. Don't see too many seeded coins, especially in Rattler holders. So I picked this one up from Moody Metals. Um, he he sent this one to CAC. It didn't CAC, but it still has a pretty strong look to it. And like I said, I just can't find stuff uh, that's seeded in Rattler holders. We uh, picked up a few more older holders here. They don't look old to you, but the series holders are, uh, you know, they graded those a pretty long while ago in the 2000 uh, range, maybe a little bit earlier. But here's a 1945 Walking Liberty half. Does still have some strong luster on the coin. Would not cack in my opinion, but still a pretty lovely piece of history. Um, I do love buying walkers in uh, in Rattler holders. Uh, we've been buying buffaloes a little bit lately as well. This is a 1938D over S buffalo nickel graded MS66 by PCGS. It is CAC approved. Picked this one up from Blake. Now uh, we have a lot of buffalo nickels available, but you know when you have one that's CAC approved and has kind of the more tougher variety D over S, that's something that you want to pick up. It's just uh, you know a nice common date buffalo, uh, better grade and CAC approved. All the bells and whistles that you want for a coin that you can offer to your customers. Here is an 1878 Carson City uh, Morgan dollar. This one looks really strong. It is you know kind of a B coin, which is what uh, John would call it. Uh, in a, in an old series holder, but the luster is strong. No spots on the coin. Everything that you really want, like I've been talking about. And so, very fortunate enough for Blake to offer these to us off the bat. He's just uh, a very giving person and uh, so thankful to know him. But here's an 1883cc Morgan, uh, grade MS64. Same story. You know, textbook, beautiful coin. This is a B coin. Uh, it doesn't exceed, but it does look very nice for the grade. Uh, I don't mind buying common date Carson Cities, especially when they're CAC approved. And uh, I'm very happy to pick up these two from him and get this awesome walker in. This is a 1945 S, a Walking Liberty half. Strong luster on both sides. Nice old green holder. Do think this one has a really nice strong shot at CAC, but uh, we'll be offering this to you guys on the website, AkushaCollectibles.com. We hope you guys have some time to check it out. But here's one of my favorite pickups of the day. This is a 1902 Proof Barber Dime. Ended up buying, buying this for Trent. Uh, he's just been a real blessing to us, and we want to get back to him when we can. As you guys can see when we have the light on it, uh, there's some blue and reds. Just a really interesting proof. And it is CAC approved. John thought it was a nice coin, and I think it's lovely too, but... So thankful for Trent, like I said, we're going to add something to his collection, make it a little bit better, and he does like those CAC coins, but thank you guys for watching this part of the video, let's uh, cut it to the outro. Those coins were, I mean, did you guys see these coins? These coins are awesome, dude. I mean, we got some gold, we had, you know, some Colombian, a Colombian half dollar really looks proof like, we got some Tone Morgans, 93S, like, just the variety in this episode was pretty awesome, but uh, like we were talking about before, uh, we really want to continue to do this um, as long as possible. And the best way we're going to do that is, you know, keeping those costs down of what runs a business, while also at the same time giving the customers value uh, by offering content like this, but also creating, uh, you know, an online coin shop that you guys can call home sometimes. And so... Uh, we, we really hope you guys enjoyed this coin video. If you guys want to watch any more of our coin videos, we have a link down below to a few of our playlists. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this uh, coin video today. Please leave a like, um, subscribe if you're new, and uh, comment your thoughts down below. What do you think about the tip that we had for you guys? Um, how have you guys, if you are, have, how have you implemented in your life? All these things we really want to hear from you about. So. Please uh, you know, engage in some dialogue down below. We really want to grow this community. But we will see you guys in the next video.